Hey everybody, it is Eric with Rockin' H TV and Rockin' H Farm Toys. Tonight in this live stream, what I will do is explain to you how I made the Walker Farms 164 scale replica trucks. Um, this isn't anything I was asked to do. I just decided, you know, I'm gonna do this because it'd be fun and um, turned out to be a bit more of a challenge than I thought it would. Um, in one regard, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but overall it was really, really cool and I'm glad I did them. So we'll say hey to Caden and we'll let YouTube do its work and let everyone uh, who wants to watch get on board. If you're watching, please give me a shout out so I know you're here. And you might be wondering why in the world, Eric, are you drinking caffeine-free Diet Coke? It's because I'm not old, or I don't feel old, but caffeine and sugar make me stay awake. So, I don't want, don't drink it. Randall's here, good to see you. McGowan, sounds Australian, is that? Can't tell. All right, excuse me a minute. Hey, we have Nathaniel, all right. So, while we're kind of waiting for people that want to watch uh, to gather, we have Kurt. Hi, Kurt Cross, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, if you have questions before we kind of get started, now's a good time to ask them. Uh, my shop is <clears throat> kind of a mess because I just got done with the model building summit. Basically, I take my shop here, everything, all my tools and equipment, and move it down to a local hotel ballroom. And then Friday night till Sunday afternoon, we make models. Hey, Levi, how are you? And uh, every year, I'm always impressed what guys are able to do. Um, you know, I've always kind of bragged about how much you can get done, and it's not really designed for you to get as much done as you possibly can, which I suggest you try anyway, but, uh, and that's what we do. So, uh, yesterday, about one o'clock, I finally got everything, um, back unloaded from my pickup into here, and I uh, still haven't finished putting it all away. Because... Uh, while I had the shop empty, I wanted to repaint my floor, so I gave it a coat of white paint, my daughter and I did, because I like, I like the white in here, because, uh, I told my wife when I put this shop together, I said, I want it to feel like I'm standing on the surface of the sun, so that's why, <laughs> that's why everything is white, and there's lots of bright lights, uh, I believe these are daylight LEDs, and uh, actually, I wouldn't mind having another bank of them right here. You see that shadow? Illuminate that a little bit. That would be really awesome. I'd love to have another bank of lights. <laughs> Excuse me. It's chilly. Actually, it's not bad in here. It's only 60 right now. All right. So, um, what we'll do then, uh, I'm going to show you what I've done, and then I'm going to explain how I did it. Now, if you've been following me on social media in different places, I've said that I've been doing this. Uh, I have... Red Peterbilt 1.0 and Blue Peterbilt 1.0 and then Red and Blue Peterbilts 2.0. And because of that, because I did it two distinctly different ways. And that's what I'm going to get into, the nuts and bolts of how that works. Um, and they have different price points, both of them. So uh, we'll have, to, and then depending on your skill set and what you have available parts, um, wow, there's just going to be a lot. Uh, you'll have to consider if you want to do one yourself. Uh, and then also... I've got, um, yeah, we'll just stop there. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, get going then, huh? You should build an old school KW900A. I've actually done one of those. If you go into my um, Big and Little uh, photo album on Facebook, there is a W900A I did for a guy. Well, actually, I did it for his daughter. His daughter gave it to him for Christmas. Uh, he is 80 years old. Well, at the time he was 80 years, probably older than that. Uh, where can I find fenders for DCP? He says, Levi asked, uh, go to eBay and look for Gabe Fleener. I'll post the link in the comments when we're done. Uh, but anyway, this guy was 80 years old. At the time he was 80 years old, still driving Holland silage. And so he had a W900A he bought years ago and then put a dump bed on it. And he's been hauling silage ever since. And uh, I think he custom cut some weed at one point, too. Anyway, so yeah, I have done one, and they're cool. They're usually resin, which I'm not a big resin guy, but that's okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they're still cool. All right, let's take a look and see what we got here. 
All right. Hey, Kyler's here. Good to see you, Kyler. What do we have here? What's that? What? What? Check that out. What in the world is going on there? Okay. So here we have the two blue Peterbilts and the two red ones. I'm going to start with version 1.0. 1.0 will be the version that's easier than version 2.0. So I'm going to set these two over here. I'm going to set this one over here. And uh, I got video coming. I didn't film every little step of these this time, mostly because there's so many moving parts, and it seems like when I had time to work, I didn't, um, I didn't get it done. I just, just like, oh crap, I just need to work, and didn't get all the work, all the film taken I wanted. Anyways, okay. So, all right. So we'll start with the red one. The red one was made. If you've ever seen an Earl 367, I believe it usually comes. It's, it's. The only piece of die cast on the Ertl 367 is this part right here. And then it's got a flatbed that's all plastic and then you have the Ertl wheels. Why did I choose that? One, because the Welker Farms Red Peterbilt has a sloped nose and you can see here it's got a sloped nose. And um, it makes it fairly simple to work on. So if you're looking to do a replica of their trucks the easy way, this by far is the easiest and probably most economical way to get it done because you're gonna spend 16 bucks or $17 on an Earl cab. You can buy them at any farm store uh, that might be near you, eBay, of course the internet's got them. And these are plentiful, you can buy them all day long, they're all over the freaking place. So this one is probably the easiest one to do uh, out of the two that I'll show you, out of, out of the two choices of your Red Pete. So uh, basically, and this is what makes it so beautiful, you're gonna take the cab apart, and they're very simple to take apart, you can see the grill is one piece. Um, theirs actually has double headlight 379 mirrors, this, or headlights, this one does not. This is just a plain Jane grill I reused. Um, so you're $17 into the cab, excuse me, the cab. Um, what I did was I bought a Diecast Promotions Peterbilt frame. I think you could use any DCP frame you wanted to if you wanted working suspension and then also to have a fifth wheel plate that was high enough to fit the really awesome trailers that are made now. Um, so I bought a frame, but any frame, any diecast promotions frame should work as long as it's got a fifth wheel plate. And if you can find one, a frame that's already got the third axle on it, that'll save you money down the road because then you won't have to hunt for a third axle. It'll already be built into the frame and then you can just use the frame as is. So what I did was, <clears throat> and you can't see it very well because I've covered it up with brass too, but I cut the frame of the de the Ertl. This, so this is all plastic here. This is die cast, this is plastic. These fenders and this little bit back here are also plastic. Um, all of that's plastic. And I cut that behind the sleeper about a half inch or less, three eighths maybe. And then I cut the die cast promotions frame so uh, I joined the Ertl plastic frame and the diecast promotions frame together using a um, uh, quarter inch C channel. And that's just, that's, and so that's how I married the two frames together. Then I found a, a third axle uh, off the dump truck, uh, off of a frame that I had bought from a guy. And I just repurposed this third axle off that frame and put it on this one and then uh, glued it in place, had to modify this piece to make it stick to the frame flush, and then uh, glued it in place, that was it. So this is stock, this is all stock, this is a stock piece but off of another truck. Uh, and then the wheels, these are Canada Dakota two hole buds, and these are Canada Dakota floats. These are six, I think these are six dollars an axle, and I think these are three. Now the tires that come with it are regular sized tires. I actually have a stash of low pro uh, die cast promotions tires. I've, I've just, they didn't work for a pro several projects I was using. I had to put the regular size tires on. So I just have this bag of them I've kept over time and I put some low pro tires on here. You can also buy low pro tires from Canada Dakota if you don't have a source for them. So uh, that's, where the wheels, tires, and the frame, and how that was assembled. And then this is a Peterbilt uh, battery box takeoff out of my parts bin. Exhaust came out of my parts bin. 
and this tank is actually a Kenworth tank off of a T800. You can buy the proper tire, the proper um, fuel tank, and here they are. This is actually the, the tank that should be on this truck, but I didn't use it. This tank is uh, 3D printed out of Model Mechanic on Shapeways.com. So that's the proper fuel tank for this truck. But at the when I started assembling this over the weekend, I didn't have one handy, so I just used a Kenworth tank. But anything with these two steps, because their, their red truck has uh, the two-step fuel barrel, that will work. Uh, then I used a just a, uh, a deck plate here to help give integrity to the whole frame and give it strength and then drilled a hole in there and used some airlines and just stuck quite a bit longer than these shown. So I cut them in half and then got two sets of airlines out of one. And that's how this one rolled. So you're way less, you're about, with all the parts and, and this is just a can of mar maroon metallic paint that I had at the house. It's nothing fancy, so I used it because uh, I couldn't really tell what their color was from the videos. I just knew it, was kind of, it looked like a metallic maroon of some sort, so that's the color I chose. So I think if you got close to that, you'd be fine. Other than that, this thing is pretty well stock uh, up here on the cab. So did put some aftermarket exhaust on it to make it match theirs because theirs has a round can for the muffler and then a short stack that put on there. And then... This was all this, you know, I used this chrome pen to uh, give the clear, clearance lights a little bit of color. And uh, Molotow chrome pen found all over the internet, and I think Hobby Lobby carried off of it. Okay. Um, since I'm working on the red truck, you know, I might just do the other one while we're at it. So this is 1.0 over here on my left. And this is version 2.0. Now this one's going to be a bit more of a challenge. This one's going to be a bugger uh, for some of you, but hopefully not. So this is a diecast promotions 379 Peterbilt along with the 379 frame. So I used, I just bought a truck and I had a third axle. And so I just repurposed the whole thing. Uh, so basically took a whole thing apart, of course, and you're going to notice that the grill here is kind of goofy and you're going to notice a little seam right here. So you'll notice how this frame or this hood angles from back to front toward the grill. It angles down, right? Well, the reason for that and the stock, the stock hood does not do that. The stock hood is flat. It's a long nose 379 hood that I used. Okay, so how did I get the angle? Glad you asked. Eric Amy, and I forget his company name, but Eric Amy says, take your Dremel with a cutoff wheel and cut the front of the hood almost all the way to the back and leave just a little bit of die cast here at the back where the end of my blade is on both sides. So you got this groove all the way from the front to the, from the back to the front, except for this tiny bit, just keeping this thing together. What you do then, so you cut that groove down the hood, okay? And then you squash the two front pieces together and then uh, JB weld them in place. So I didn't get a very clean hood seam right here. Bo's here, good to see you Bo. So you notice this hood seam isn't very clean. I didn't make that as pretty as I could have, but what I like here is for demonstration purposes, you can see where I married the seam together and then use die cast, or JB weld, excuse me, to uh, cover up the seam inside and on the outside. Then I also took my sander and I sanded the hood down on these trucks right over here, normally on a regular long nose peat. Tractor Trucks and Pups is here, good to see you. There is a, a latch. Well, I went ahead and ground the hood out to the latch. So the latch is gone, but that was my, not only and now an angled hood, but also a short nose peat. Okay, so something to keep in mind there. Reused the factory fenders. Uh, their truck over here does not have exhaust on the driver's side, but it does have exhaust holes in the die cast, which I covered up, and again, not very well. 
Um, yes, that is the eagle in the background. So that is uh, what we did there. So I cleaned those, so I covered those up and you can see in the film, you can see right there in the picture, I didn't do the best job in the world filling those holes up. Um, so uh, again, shortened up the frame uh, and I eyeballed it guys. I just thought, well, that looks like it's short enough. And I just had some uh, some screenshots of air trucks off of videos I, I watched. And I thought, oh, that looks about right. And that's how I, I went ahead and determined the length. And if you want the length, I'll, I'll mark that down or I'll write it, leave in a comment or something. So that is how we got this. Again, using Canada Dakota front two hole buds and low pro tires and Canada Dakota floats for the truck and I use the same Canada Dakota floats on all four of them because they all have front floats on the truck. Um, cab, again, Molotow chrome pen to give that some color. Uh, I did not realize that I used a 389 roof cap, which limited me to using 389 fritz and uh, air horns which don't look right they don't match the real truck but then again that's that's not the end of the world and one of them kind of bent and i just noticed now that i didn't push that all the way into the cab that should be down another sixteenth of an inch at least a millimeter that's not sitting flat oh darn it all right hey stetson's here good to see you stetson uh, and then again, went through my parts bin and found some exhaust. This was way too long, so I had to cut the uh, pipe down and stick it inside the muffler. I drilled that out and then put that in the muffler. Again, another three, uh, another T800 fuel barrel uh, because I needed the two steps, so I used a three uh, T800 fuel barrel I had out of my parts bucket. Uh, and again, this one should actually have, whoops, not that fuel tank, or that fuel tank, should have this fuel tank on it to look true okay so you're gonna have if you buy a 389 or excuse me a 379 off ebay you're gonna have about 65 in just the cab and then you'll have another three dollars in the wheels and tires and ten dollars or excuse me six dollars in the float so you're gonna have ten bucks in the third axle and the front float and then 65 in a cab so you're looking at 75 in parts plus paint and anything you might not have on hand. So, why does this hood grill look so silly? Hi James, good to see you. The hood grill, the grill looks so silly because I failed to recall that we shortened this hood and we modified the front of the hood. So now look at that. I got about a millimeter of gap here because everything's shorter so, guess what? It doesn't fit right. It hits the fender. The headlights here hit the fenders. But you'll notice these are the correct headlights versus this one. So you can see the difference. It's noticeable right there. So that is the maroon truck in its glory. This is version 1.0. This is version 2.0. You'll have probably, well, you're gonna have, I'm gonna shoot on the tall side and say you're gonna have 80 bucks in parts to make this truck, and you'll probably have uh, 40 or so to make this one over here. This one by far is easier than this one. Um, it's not as accurate. You don't get clear, clear cab glass, if that's important to you, which you could change with a Coke bottle. You know, any clear plastic would make that. Oh, look at that. Well, that fell out. Ha. Huh. Always when I'm live. Always when I'm live. Isn't that fun? Huh, somebody forgot to glue that in. Who was that mask man? So this one is um, definitely a load easier to, to make, I think. It's just, that one's, wow, way wicked easier. Hey, Cal, good to see ya. All right, Cal's here. Now we can start. So, um, that is the Maroon Pete. Again, 1.0. 2.0, difficult, excuse me, easy, difficult. So 2.0 is difficult, and you're gonna see the same thing happen on the blue ones. 
So let's start with 1.0 on the blue ones. Now, why did I have 1.0, 2.0 on the blue ones? Because I was in St. Louis at the Gateway Farm Toy Show showing off my work to a guy, Justin Umber is his name, and that scallywag says, hey, Eric, you know, it doesn't look right. Well, thanks, Justin. But he says, why don't you try this action? Okay, so I tried what he described, and I'll share that with you in just a moment. Let's start with 1.0 again going to be a lot easier to work with. You're going to start out with one of these gearbox cabs, and that is consistent on both of these. This is a gearbox. This is a gearbox. You can find these on eBay. They're getting a little more difficult to find, but generally 35 to 45 bucks will buy you a gearbox cab. Then you're going to find a DCP frame. Any old DCP frame with two tandem axle will work. And, uh, and then you're ready to go. Normally, DCP frames are running about 25 bucks plus shipping. So good luck on that. So you were already about 55 in just to get this thing rolling, even probably a little more than that, depending on how well you buy this thing. Uh, let's start with the wheels. We'll go here. Canada Dakota floats again. Mom, they should give me a commission for all the time I plug them. Uh, and then you're gonna have to find one of these double headlight grills. These are coming, they can be found on eBay or you buy a parts truck. So you buy a parts truck or go on eBay and hopefully you can find one of these. For a while, he's really a pain to pain and about to find. And when I finally landed on some, I bought a bunch just to have them in my parts because I do a lot of Peterbilts. Anyway, okay. So what you're going to do, you're going to chop this cab up right here and make it look like that. Easy, huh? So what you're going to do is you're going to cut this cab. Um, generally, I start here and I go through the sleeper, and I follow this line right down here, okay? And then I come back and I cut this off, and then I use sandpaper to sand that down. Now, you're gonna have this big hole here and a big hole here. So I'll use brass sheet or styrene sheet, however, whatever I happen to have handy, and I'm gonna close the back of this up and close the back of this up. Um, so, uh, you know, I need to stop and answer some questions because I've seen a few come up and I haven't answered them. Bo asked, do you do you customer builds or sell your customs? Uh, basically, we do replicas here. So if you've got a replica of a truck, that's what we do. Um, how about how much the trucks cost themselves? Oh, like the yellow one? Yeah, it's it's you're going to buy it from 35 to 45 bucks on eBay. And that's where I've been finding them. I really haven't found them any other work, any place else because... They're not made anymore. The company's out of business. Uh, so, and this is the only way you're going to buy these two right now. At some point, someone might 3D print or maybe even do a resin 377, but at the moment, I don't know when it exists. This is the only one I know of. Um, I take that back. I take that back. Ertl makes one of these too, but I like the gearbox a lot more. And you're going to do the same amount of work on both cabs. It doesn't matter. I just like the gearbox better. Okay, so we're going to cut this off, cut that off, we're going to fill it up. We're also going to cut this fender skirt off. We're going to cut this line right here. Cut that fender skirt off, and then right down here. And we're, and this skirt's going away because, look at this, it doesn't happen here. So the fender skirt's gone here and there. And then the back end of this cab has been filled with plastic, and the top is with plastic as well. You can kind of see a half moon shape if you hold this right in the light. Oh, right. Can you see it? Let me see. Yeah, right there. You can see it right here. See this half moon shape? That was where that was. Okay, we're not done with this cab yet. We still have a little more surgery to do to it. After you get this taken apart, what I did to give this a smooth, smooth finish on the front was I went ahead and took this to my sander. You could use a Dremel or a file. And I took these headlight covers out or the headlight die cast out, okay? And and then I went ahead and took it to right about here so it was really noticeable. See? So you can see the headlight area on the yellow one is gone on the blue one. That is all gone. Okay. So, quite a bit of surgery to do this cab. But it's still doable. You can do it. And these are really not too pr badly priced. You can buy these and still have a nice model for not a whole lot of money. 
after you get the cab, after you get all your body filler sanded and the cab is nice and smooth and glorious and beautiful looking, then you can prime and paint. And I just used a shade of metallic blue that I happen to have on hand. So it looked close to what I saw in the videos. Uh, so that's what I used. I didn't go out and buy anything special. I already had some stuff on hand. So you could, uh, then we got to go by this grill and we put the grill on here. Um, well, let me step back a minute. After I get this thing primed and painted, I shortened up my frame to what it looked like the real one, just eyeballing the real one, what the real one looked like. And I can give you that measurement if you want. Then I leveled it on the frame, leveled the frame, the cab on the frame using a styrene plastic, just scrap piece of plastic and glued it down. I also used a deck plate here to give my seam where I cut this thing in half, where I joined it together, more strength. So you can see underneath, it's not real glamorous, but it does work. Here's where I cut right there, boom and boom. Um, the both tanks on this truck are 3D printed and they come from shapeways.com out of model mechanics store. This is a step off of a 379. You can buy these on eBay all day long. And so, and then this one has the matching tanks on both sides. One's just fore and one's aft. Uh, these air cans come off of a 379. These are 379 Peterbilt air cans, but the stock version is quite a bit longer. So there's usually one, two, three rings on these and a little bit longer after that. And I cut this off at the third ring. So it looked closer to what was on the real truck. Painted them solid blue and then took a chrome, Molotov chrome pen and ta -da, chromed up the top of the can. Uh, the fenders and all that are just stock. The exhaust is aftermarket. I, I dug that out of my parts bin and then modified it to look about the same height as theirs. The grill on the, and I don't have my parts to show you out, but the grill on the, um, gearbox the grill here and the bumper are one piece so what I did was I cut the bumper away from the grill painted the bumper black with a black paint pen actually so it's not real pretty but it works and I just glued it here and here to the die cast to where so it looks kind of like their bumper does excuse me and then, of course, polished it off with some air lines that are just drilled in, uh, drilled a hole in the deck plate and then put the air lines in it. Uh, the mirrors and air horns are stock, so there's nothing fancy about that, as well as the, these lights. These are stock, and the visor is stock as well. And so is the windshield. Everything, so that's all stock up here. Okay. So this one is very doable, much more complicated than the red ones, but still doable. And now that you have an idea, it's just a matter of buying one of these in a frame and going to work. Okay, 2.0. Now this is the one Justin said, hey Eric, why don't you try this? I'm like, oh great, all right. So 2.0 received the same treatment as 1.0 as far as cutting down the cab, getting rid of fender skirt, skirts, and then sanding off the headlight area, getting all that out of the road. That's all the same. Um, mounting it to the frame is the same. Uh, cutting the frame was the same. I did use slightly different tanks on this one and slightly different exhaust, but that's okay, you get the idea. The treatment on the air cans was the same. Um, this part of the grill was basically the same. And the big, oh, and then the bumper, the big difference on from 1.0 to 2.0 is these fenders and this bumper. All right, what did I do? So I went ahead and I cut this fender clean off. I cut this off. Uh, so I cut that off and let me see here. We're gonna stop and just answer a couple more questions. I've been seeing a few come in. So let's go over here. Um, do you know how many dollars a 3D printer off the top of your head? Uh, I, you know, you could buy desktop printers for like $300 now and other, I don't own a 3D printer. I outsource all that to China and New York, shapeways.com and backfox.com. So I just uh, have my designs made 
uh, I pay people to do that and then I pay people to print because I don't know how to do any of it. Um, could you make a 56B model Mac like mine? Uh, you know, uh, it's a good question. I, I don't know. Uh, if you could send me a photo of it at rockethfarmtoys at gmail.com or go to my website and use my contact page, uh, that would be great. Um, but I, I never made one, so I don't know. Uh, tractors, trucks, and pups, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of Dremel do you use for your projects? Um, Dremel, about 25 years ago. No, not that long. 21 years ago, maybe. I've been using it ever since. And then I went to a Black Friday sale and bought another Dremel that I don't even know what bottle number it was. Uh, all I can tell you was I liked the price, so I bought it. And that's what I bought. And both of mine have cords. So, yeah, both of my Dremels have cords. I don't do the uh, cordless bit. So, um, yeah, uh, all I can tell you is my old one that still runs like a champ, um, is variable speed and the other one I bought uh, it's a Dremel but it's just you no know, just like I said it was a Black Friday special and uh, I bought it it was like 40 bucks or something I don't recall um, and it's a two-speed which I don't really care as much for I like the variable speed so those are the Dremels I use okay 2.0 now as you can see once you knock off this fender right here See, that fender's going to cut clear off. You're going to have a huge old gap. I mean, a humongous gap right here. So, I took brass. I think plastic would have been better. I don't know how. I've heard you can solder die cast, but I have no clue how to do it. <clears throat> and I haven't really studied it to try. But anyways, you're going to have this humongous... Um, gap right here. So I closed all that in with brass that I glued to the die cast, which isn't the best plan. I think I ought to use plastic instead. It's a lot easier to use than brass. And I think it glues the die cast better. So you can see, I guess you can't see, I did a really good job. Actually, you can see kind of a faint line right here where this was all open clear back to here. So uh, and you really can't see it in here either. Well, right here you can see the bottom edge of that brass right there and there. So this is what made this one so challenging. One, you had to close this gap right here. And then two, after I had everything closed off, then I started dry fitting the cab to the frame to get it to set level and get this cab in the right position on the frame so we had the forward axle or the setback axle look. After I dry fit this cab to the frame, uh, then I went ahead and placed these die cast promotions. These are 379 peat fenders, which I didn't put on straight on both sides, which annoys me to death, but uh, I was lucky to get them on. Um, so these are 379 fenders that I had in my parts bin that I put on both sides. If you look at their real truck, the Welker truck, it does not have the same fender setup as 1.0. See, theirs has this nice curved 379 look. And that's what this is, a 379. So that's how I accomplished this truck. You can kind of see here where I got a little, I didn't, actually I spent quite a bit of time with body filler getting this to smooth up because it was just fighting it all the way. So you can kind of see right here where this again was open all this way. It was crazy. Oh, and you can even see a seam right here where the brass it was right there. You can see that seam. Um, this was crazy wicked to, to do, but it was still kind of fun because I learned a lot. And so this is way more challenging than this one. And this one's a good bit of work, but this one was much more challenging. It wasn't impossible as you can see, but it was, it was, it was a good project. <sighs> okay, the fen the bumper, the bumper I did the same way as 1.0 with this caveat. All right, since I use different fenders here, I could reuse the factory bumper off the gearbox, but then I had this huge gap in here and it looked totally stupid. So what I did was I filled this in with a piece of plastic and then sanded it and made and dry fit it until it kind of wrapped around these fenders here a little bit 
and then, um, so wrapped around the fenders, and then I had a better place to glue this to this frame. Okay, so that's how that went. Um, so basically the same amount of work went into both of them, except for this bit right here. That was the big challenge and the big change. Uh, you'll notice this one doesn't have these little, whatever these feelers are right here. This does not have the same, I cut those off because the real one doesn't have them. And then you'll notice there's no headlights on here. I'm gonna buy headlights from shapeways.com from the model mechanic in his store. They're in my shopping cart, I just haven't bought them. I'm kinda of waiting to buy some other stuff at one time to save shipping and spread it out. So that's why I don't have those headlights on here yet. But they're, I'll have them on there, it's not a big deal. But this one has single square headlights versus the double headlights. But you notice I got a turn signal here and, and I just didn't bother modifying the headlights on that. Anyway, uh, so cut these little curve feeler things off, got rid of the headlights, and new headlights are, will be coming, and I'll get those on. You'll notice the air horns are slightly different between the two, and that's just because there's, I think one was a Campbell soup truck, and one was Pennzoil or something, or maybe I grabbed the wrong, maybe I grabbed the wrong air horns, I don't know. <laughs> Hard to tell. You'll notice that the, uh, the lights across the top of the cab are different on each one. So who knows what I did there. Other than that, the air cans and all that were the same process as this one. And that, my friends, is versions 1.0 and 2.0 of how... Ha! My stupid enough. Look at that. Anyway, 1.0 and 2.0 of the Walker Farms Red and Blue Trucks. Now, let's take a little bonus piece here and take a look at these internationals. Somebody here had a blem and then didn't grab the right can of paint. Whose dumb idea was that? But we'll just explain with this one. So this is the 9370 truck that they rebuilt several, a couple of years ago. And what do we got cooking here? Okay, so this is an international, an Ertl International uh, 9370. And really, all I did was strip that truck down. And inside here, this is kind of the hardest part of this particular build. There is big dumb die cast that comes clear up over here. And that's to hold the front axle to the plastic frame. Uh, so you'll notice here, you can see some Dremel marks right here and Dremel marks right there. I cut all this die cast out, all that die cast out there. And then I also shorten these two die cast pegs that are also a part of the original truck. So uh, I used some testers paint from Hobby Lobby for both colors. This one is a, a root beer color, and I forget what this one is like, a desert something or other uh, color. And then this is an orange decal. I just got the brightest orange I could print from my uh, desktop ink, uh, inkjet printer. And then I printed this on white decal paper and then cut it to fit the inside of the, these two stripes. You know, and if I were doing this again, you know, a smart money... Huh. Desert gold, desert dust? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to go look at the can. I don't recall. Um, hmm, I just had a revelation. Anyways, so mask and taped the stripes. So this is all painted on. The only decal is this orange stripe here. And then mask and paint, painted the stripe down the hood. And then cut orange decal strips here for the front of the hood. And that's how I did that wraparound effect there. This will go on, where is my frame? That is gonna go on this frame. This is way too long and obviously it's a light color. You know, I don't think the real truck, <clears throat> excuse me, has such a light color on the frame. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It doesn't from the photos anyways. It's, it's darker like this. But anyway, this is the color I have, so this is the one I used. So this will go in this frame. This is a Peterbilt, DCP Peterbilt frame. And I just happened to buy those right one time. And so I bought a bunch of them and had them on hand. That's why I'm using this frame. If I could find a Kenworth frame that would work as well, I would use a Kenworth frame. I'm not afraid of it. So that's what's gonna happen on this. And then of course we'll have chrome wheels all the way around. And I will have DCP takeoff uh, straight pipe, beveled straight pipes for this one. And 
actually, this one's really not too far away from being done. Um, the original Ertl grill and headlight, you can see the slot for the headlights. I'm gonna reuse that, but one of them's trash, so I'll take my chrome pen and uh, run a chrome pen over the uh, old grill so it looks nice and shiny like the real one. And let me see, what else? Oh, and then they've got uh, pl black plastic rear fenders for their truck. And on their truck, or, and I could buy those two. You could buy those two. Those are at shapeways.com uh, in Model Mechanics store. They are awesome. I've used them before on different projects. They work really, really well. So uh, shapeways.com, Model Mechanic, and look for the fenders, the Welker fenders. I mean, you can use them for any truck, but the fenders on the Welker truck are at Shapeways and they match. Okay. Uh, let's go and answer some questions here. We'll start with Kurt. Could I make a T880 day cab with the company decals? Of course, so could you. Uh, I've never messed with the T880, so that would be a fun one. I'd love to mess with the T880. Haven't done it yet, so uh, no one's asked for a T880 yet. So I'd love to do that. Uh, and you could do it too. Uh, simply go to Circuit City Decals. He'll do decals for you. I mean, there's tons of guys. I've been using Circuit City for water slide decals. Uh, he does artwork to finish decal. And I've been paying between 60 and 70, sometimes 80 bucks, depending on how complex the art is and how much art that I have. And I'll give you a whole sheet, which is way more than you need, but that's what you get. Okay. So yes, I could do that. Go to rockinhfarmtoys.com, hit the contact button there, and we'll get you put in the pipeline. How has your airbrush been? It's been awesome. Um, I, I'm not an expert at using it yet. Uh, I'm absolutely... 100% no expert, but I really don't care if I fail. And, um, and I, you know, and really I've told some guys, the reason I bought that airbrush is I thought, I've never used an airbrush, I'm gonna go buy one. And I needed to spend some money at the end of the year. So uh, I think I paid, what, 140 for it on Amazon or something like that, don't even recall. It's a two stage, which, yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, I've, I've been enjoying that. Some guy said, Eric, do I need to buy an airbrush as a beginner? And I would say, heck no. Do you know how much money I've made using rattle cans? I, okay, I've been doing this since 2012, and I just now, in December, bought an airbrush. <laughs> and I've only used the thing four or five times so far. So do you have to buy an airbrush? Absolutely not. If you're, I mean, just go, go make a mess. Learn how to do this, and when your skills develop and you're ready to jump up to the next level, then go start spending money on, on quality tools. Uh, because you don't have to have quality. You don't have to have really fancy tools to do amazing work. And I've told everybody, I've made thousands of dollars sitting at my kitchen table, doing what? Working on models. And then I would take matching paint and I'd step outside on my back deck. This is before I had this place. Um, I'd step out on my back deck and uh, I'd spray paint and I'd run in the house real quick and then let it dry. And <laughs> there's photos on Facebook somewhere, because I posted them, of model parts hung all over my kitchen drying because I just happened to be painting that day. So you do not have to have, especially if you're a beginner, just go out, get you some basic tools, get you some basic paint, go make a mess, fail a lot, and learn. That's what I do all the time. Bo says, do you have any old equipment you don't use anymore for sale? Not really. Uh, I mean, I kind of use everything that I have. Um, back in 20, 2020, my goal is I want to get a quieter belt sander. This thing right here is one noisy sucker. And we, I use this thing all the time. I'm not going to lie. It is a handy tool. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't want to make... At, at, the, at the amount of models that I create and, and churn out, um, I wouldn't want to be without this thing for sure, because it's just a huge time saver. So, uh, yeah. All right, what other questions do you have, guys? Uh, did you get any, oh, Kyler, yes. So, at the Model Building Summit over the weekend, I went ahead and finished this. Okay, what did I do? Let's flip you around. About how much longer is the live stream you think? <laughs> uh, probably until you guys get done, get tired of me uh, talking. Uh, actually, i probably wrap this up in 10 minutes or so because I need to go help my wife on a project she's working on. 
Okay, so here we go. This is the Ford Ort. Now, the only thing that I didn't do for you guys is show you how I mounted it to the cab, or to the frame, excuse me. So this is a Peterbilt frame. Um, you'll notice that I cut it, and I didn't do it pretty, but I did cut this, and, and you know, I thought, this is practice, I don't care. So I, shim I shimmed up the uh, service bed to get the right spacing between the rear axles and the top of the service bed there with the fender. I shimmed that up with plastic strips until it was the right height. And then I glued the plastic strips to the bed, then the bed to this part of the frame, and then the bed to this part of the frame and joined them together. So you'll see it's not a glamorous stretch. Is it stretched? Yeah. So this is the cheater's way of stretching a truck right here, okay? And really, how many times do you pick them up and turn them upside down? Um, ever? Yeah, that's me. Uh, so this really was not a big deal. Once once I got the hood on and, you know, then it was just mount the, the uh, I had to modify the bottom of this uh, a little bit, nothing extravagant. You'll notice some white shims in there. There's some white shims right there to uh, level the cab on the frame. Um, and then you can see the engine. The hood does open, but it's really super tight, so I'm not going to open it. And then I had uh, this particular grill left over, and I had these fenders left over from another in my parts bin. And I had a Texas bumper left over, and I had a drop visor left over, and some leftover exhaust. Made them nice and long because that's what we do. Actually, I kind of wanted to turn this into a weed burner, but I noticed I didn't close the holes on the back of this cab. The holes for the exhaust were still there after it was painted. I'm like, eh, well, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, I had these leftover decals here, so I put this decal on the front. And then Molotov chrome pin here for the door latches on the cabinets on the service bed. And this thing is ready to go down the road. This is not a glamorous model. I mean, it's okay. It, it's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all right. It, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that thing's done. Thank goodness. Uh, I'm happy about that. Um, this is something else I got done at the Model Building Summit. This is just a repaint. 579 Speccast Peterbilt. And then I got this thing done. This is assembled. This is a 379 48-inch bunk. Uh, all of this is tape and paint. Everything here was tape and paint. Okay, what do we got? Uh, what color did you paint the second four-door? Um, okay, so it's, it's not painted, although it's painted. This extra crappy paint job on this thing is... Um, I was interviewed for a TV segment on our, local, on our regional TV station, and he says, hey, do you have something you can paint? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I can throw some paint on this thing. Uh, this will probably be some sort of metallic red color because I absolutely adore metallic red. But I need to do some more body work on the back. You can see here that's, that's not acceptable there. And, and then the paint is just absolute joke. So, yeah, um, that one, uh, I don't know when. I'm, oh, I know what. I'm, I'm waiting on a bed from China. I got a brand new service bed coming. It is a Siler service bed. You'll see it on Frederick Harvesting's uh, Tandem Axle T800 truck. And uh, I recreated their bed at their request. And because I like custom harvesters anyway. So uh, Siler service bed. If you go to frederickharvesting.com or look them up on Facebook, um, you will see a Tandem Axle T800 with a service bed, and that's the bed I, I had printed, and that's the one I'm gonna use for the export order. But uh, my order from China was held up due to coronavirus, because their employees weren't coming to work and they weren't at full staff. Long story short, my order was delayed at least two weeks. <clears throat> Stetson says, looks sweet, and I wanna to try to come to the Builder Summit next year. Stetson, you should. You would learn a lot, and there's two guys about your age that come. Uh, they've been coming uh, for three years now, and um, it's just really, really great. It'd be good to have you. Only eight guys come to the summit. That's all I allow in because that's all I can handle. 
And uh, I need to revamp my shopping cart so that it's live for next year because I've already got the dates reserved. It's the last three days of February, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday morning. Uh, do I focus on trucks or do you also custom tractors? I've done a couple um, custom tractors just for myself just because I thought, I don't know how to do this, so I'm going to learn. So I did an 875 Versatile. I did a 780 um, Alice Chalmers because I like that old tractor. And then I did a 2090, 2290 case. And that was a lot of fun. How does your 3D processing process work if you don't mind? Okay, Bo, here you go. Uh, if, you subscribe to my, if you subscribe to my newsletter, go to rockinhfarmtoys.com and click on the newsletter subscription. You can also do it on Facebook. And there's even some places on some of my videos where you, you can subscribe. At least the last two, I know the last two or three, there's a subscription link. There's a welcome sequence. You're going to get five welcome emails from me. And then starts blog posts that I've written over time and it explains everything from point A to Z about how I 3D print. There is no stone left unturned. My policy is no secrets and I tell you everything there. It's huge value if you don't know what you're doing about 3D printing. But I'll, get, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. Here's the abridged version uh, for that. One, I usually go to shapers.com and I go to the message boards and I find someone that is a freelance designer that kind of has a knack for what it is I want. So I like vehicles and vehicle parts, so I look for somebody that makes vehicles and vehicle parts, okay? So I find a freelancer that kind of specializes in that. Then I say, hey, freelancer B or A or John or whatever their name is, can you make this? Are you interested? And they'll say yes or no. And if they say yes, then it says, then you go through the process of negotiating with them what the terms are and what you're going to pay for it. And that is a moving target. It is all over the freaking map. Uh, I can tell you people in the United States are generally more expensive than the people overseas. But then the guy I'm using overseas right now charges me 40 bucks an hour to design for me. So... It really depends on the complexity and how big the part, not how big the part, how complex the part is. The size doesn't matter because it takes the same amount of time to draw. So you will get every video, picture, measurement, everything under the sun. If you explain to your designer in a manner that a four-year-old could understand what you want designed, you did it right. If they're asking you questions about the process, uh, that is going to cost you more and not get you a quality design fast. It's going to take longer and cost you money. Okay. So you're going to overwhelm them with information about your product, whatever it happens to be. So you're going to use, uh, that's how I do it. This is how I do it. I use, hire a designer. I do that. Once they get me the, the design and we've agreed on the terms and all that, then I go ahead and get a test print. If everything works out right, then I go ahead and uh, settle up with the guy and off we go. Uh, if the design comes back and it needs some adjustments, then I, then I tell the guy, you know, this part needs moved, this part's not big enough. Uh, and then we go through the test print process again until we have what I want. Uh, and then uh, after that, uh, you upload it to shapeways.com. You can go to China. There's... Lots of different third-party printing services. Uh, if you Google that, you'll get a ton of them. And, and I list all of these services out, not all of them, but the ones I've worked with, I list them out in uh, the blog series. It's one of the emails. You'll get uh, iMaterialized, Shapeways, 3D Hubs, Backfox, and I think there's one or two others I've used uh, because I, I don't own a printer and I don't have any desire to own a printer. That's it. I didn't like that. Okay. Um, how much is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, Kyler said, lots of fun. And Kyler is a guy to watch because that guy's up and coming. He, at the summit, did some amazing two-tone work, man. I 
And just, I'm still blown away at how well those two tones came out. They were just gorgeous. First time out of the gate, too. I mean, just tape, paint, boom, and they were perfect. They were really, really amazing. Neat and clean. They were awesome. Stetson says, how much is the Summit? And Boa is asking, what is the Summit? It's $200. And basically what it is, is I'm going to move my shop from here to a hotel ballroom. And you have access to all my tools. So all of these tools here, the paint booth, um, you'll have a set of tools like that. Uh, I supply the tools, the space, and I will hold your hand and help you as much as I, and I'll help you get what you want done. Now, I'm not going to do it for you. But um, you're going to have a dedicated period of time to learn and make your uh, models come to life. Uh, Kyler's a perfect example. He would ask me questions, say, hey, how do I take this apart? Or what's the best way to do this? And I would say, do this, you know, here's how I would do it. And, and then, you know, and then he goes and does it. So uh, that's how we do that. You bring your stuff. So if you want to make one of the, if you want to make a Welker truck or models that you want to modify up, and then um, you'll begin uh, taking them apart. And then when you need help, I'll be there to give you a hand. And that's how it works. Um, I supply glue and I have some paint. My paint stash here is pretty large, so I take all my paint down. Um, if you need plastic, you say, hey, Eric, I'm going to need some cheap plastic. Great. I'll, I'll supply the plastic and stuff like that. It's consumable stuff and some brass pieces and things like that. Um, you'll have access to my entire inventory of 3D stuff at a discount. So if you come to the summit and you're thinking, Eric, I want uh, I want a green head kit. They're normally $25, and at the summit, they're your price is $15. And you can buy as many of them as you want. So if you ring me up and say, Eric, I'm going to be at the summit, I want 20 service beds. Well, you'll get 20 service beds at a discount because you're at the summit. So there you go. How do you like that? So we'll work from, I really need to teach these, I need to kick these guys out of the lab because Kyler keeps me up way too late. So we will get started at five o'clock on Friday and uh, we'll go to about midnight, and then we'll get going about, well, whenever people roll around, I'm usually back there at, at 7.30 or so, and then we work till midnight, and, uh, and then Sunday morning we work till about 11 or so, and then it's time for me to pack up and get out of there. So, per the uh, contract I signed with the hotel. So, uh, that is how it works. And it's at the La Quinta here in Dodge City, Kansas. And uh, yeah, you can check out on my... Don't go to my website now and buy that because uh, I need to update it for next year and get the uh, inventory correct. But that's what it worked. That, that's the way we do it. Um, yeah. And, and, and everything is all written down uh, on my website too. Uh, you can go see... Because the contents of the weekend doesn't really change. They don't change. It's just the dates and uh, the shopping cart quantity is what changes. Okay. Um, I do not have the Alice with me. It's in my office at my day job. Excuse me. And kind of longer nights means more work getting done. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, we do put in... Now, are you required to stay at work the whole time? No. No, that is entirely up to you. The guys that usually come are there to, to churn out some stuff and get some work done. So they play hard and build long. Uh, but a couple years ago, a fella from Kansas here, actually, uh, he went up to dinner with a friend. He was gone for three hours and he took a nap in the afternoon. That's fine. Go do it. It's your weekend. I mean, this is meant to, one, learn, make some cool stuff, meet some people that are as crazy in the head as I am about models, and uh, just enjoy yourself and have a dedicated space and time and proper tools and all that so uh, you can see just how much fun it can be. So that is the Model Building Summit. That was the whew, long version. But again, everything's on my website, 
and right. Okay. That is, we are at an hour here, guys, and that's about as long as I want to go. So I'm going to let you go. And I thank you so much for being here. Gosh, there's a good crowd of you here tonight. So thank you for being here for that. Um, again, if there's any questions you have, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always willing to help. Uh, again, I plug my newsletter a few times because there is a ton of value in that newsletter. If you want to know anything about 3D printing, holy crap, that is where you need everything that I've learned. I have I've written out and it's right there for you with live links to resources and different things all there in the newsletter. So don't be afraid to subscribe to that. And then again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, man, I'd appreciate it if you do that too. So there we go. Whew. Okay. You have Facebook? Why, sure. Rockin' H on Facebook. That's what it is. And Instagram. So there you go, guys. I'm going to let you go. Any more questions, don't... Don't hesitate to leave them down there and I'll come back and answer anything you want to know. All right. So I will let you go and have a great night.